Captain on the bridge. All right, Captains, we are back on the bridge. And today, yes, yes, we will be reviewing the latest episode from Star Trek Picard Season 3. But before we do so, Captains, do us a huge favor. Hit that like button. And if you're new here, subscribe here to the YouTube bridge as we're always on the lookout for like-minded Captains where we can share our love and passion for Star Trek. Now, with that said, here we go. Captains, holy monkey. That, oof. This episode, I'm still recovering from it, Captains. To be honest with you, this had so many feels. This had so many things that I kind of knew were coming, but even knowing it was coming, it still hit the feels. So this is what we're going to do, like we've done with our previous videos, with our previous reviews. We're going to go through some of the screenshots there, drop our thoughts, go over the story, go over the plot, and of course, give my thoughts, give my impressions, and then at the end, give our conclusion so here we go so essentially we start off where we ended off in the last episode so deanna is with jack there in his mind trying to open that door and we finally kind of get what's going on here and it only took nine episodes but it is what it is we get an explanation sort of of what these roots are i thought it was sort of just changeling things but apparently it's not and they kind of explore that more but deanna here is asking jack you know to kind of really think back and he 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 pulls a memory from which from this planet here that has like a bunch of blossoms here it's kind of a beautiful scene to be honest with you saying that his mom beverly of course took him there a bunch of cherry blossom trees or whatever and there's a beautiful scene where all this petals were falling down but deanna was asking hey you got to concentrate what's going on here and she actually is like, you know what? I, we need to open that door. And before that, Jack was really talking about connection, talking about really what the roots meant to him, which is, you know, having this sort of one superior type of longing of being together, if I can really put it in that way. So, but Deanna goes ahead and opens the door and she was not prepared for what she saw. And she actually ran out of this room and went straight. She actually was apologizing to Jack, but she went straight to Picard and Beverly and kind of told them what she saw. As when she opened that door, well, she was, this is, now this shot was from one of the trailers, but we finally get to see what was inside Jack's head and it was a Borg cube. Now, there are some captains who have told me that this was their theory indeed, that it was the Borg. And I still kind of thought it was like a changeling thing because of the voices that we were hearing. It was Beverly's voices and then it was also Vatic. So I, I kind of just chalked it up to that. And But now we get finally to find out what is inside Jack's head. And it's it's the Borg. And seeing this reminds me of the sort of last teaser image we got from Star Trek Online, the last episode there of a Borg cube. And here we go again. This is the threat. This is the big bad here who has, I guess, teamed up with Dominion here. So, but then we get, of course, this week's episode title, which is Vox. So, you know, we're back here with Picard and, you know, here we heard the whole acutest thing and of course that always brings back memories and you know he gets the news here of this and they're kind of taking it hard and he wants to go tell jack and you know beverly is also talking about what it could possibly be like this technology sort of inside him that it doesn't necessarily have to be like nanites but like sort of an organic type thing or she even talked about like bees and stuff like that so i thought that was really cool but you can feel the weight of this news on on all of them really and so much so that when picard decides to go see jack well deanna's like you know what we have to treat jack as a threat now because that's why vatic was after him he what they were going to try to weaponize him in that sense where he can control people and they saw it so but he does go and see jack there and you know this this moment between Picard and Jack was probably the closest I've ever connected to Jack. I kind of felt sorry for him here. Give props to the actor for really kind of laying it out here. And I mean, I, I would say that 
my connection with him is stronger than Rafi. And he really tried to convey his sort of emotions. But this is also where I kind of got lost in his sort of character because in, in, in kind of a negative way, because all of a sudden, you know, he's talking about this and, you know, what's inside his mind. And, and you know, Picard tells him the story, of course, of what had happened to him and that, yeah, you know what, you got implanted with Borg essentially, but I'll give props to Picard here when he was talking about the time that he got simulated and was being controlled by the queen. It was good that the tone in his voice and the way he was looking at Jack, it was really good. I think Picard really did a bang up job of really portraying what he was trying to get, you know, through to Jack to of what he felt. And, but the suggestion from Picard was that he go to like this institution or this Vulcan Academy, which of course Jack's like, well, that's an institution, you know, and you know, he, he says, you know what, no thanks, I'm gonna deal with it on my own. And he tries to leave and he's blocked by security. And this moment, this is, this is where I lost Jack. To the one moment, in one moment, I am starting to connect with him because I feel bad for him. And all of a sudden, in the next, you know, it's like he's turned on everything. He's turned on Picard. Uh, but he did have a, a line here that kind of hurt, you know, as a, as a father, because Picard said, you know, protocols state that we have to protect, you know, Starfleet, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then Jack's like, I guess you didn't get the um, protocols for your son. And that, that kind of hurt. And in this moment, this is when he actually took control of the bodyguards. So this is what he's doing now. This is a Borg thing. So the red eyes threw me off. I thought it was a changing thing, but no, it's it's a Borg thing. So, and he actually takes over the security guards and he says he's going to deal with it on his own. This 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 moment kind of hurt because, of course, Beverly was chasing after him and she's trying to figure something out, but he's like, no, got to go. All those years I thought it was you in my head. No, it was the queen and he's got to go there. But he he's trying to do the thing where he goes to the source and kill the source. So this is where, again, I get lost because there are the whole nine episodes up to this point, with eight episodes, he was really trying to do everything he can to protect everyone. And now he's just taking matters in his own hands by ditching everyone, you know? And, but the, his connection, of course, now he's longing for, he knows it's about the Borg. So that's why he wants to do so walked away and Beverly's scream here was pretty bad. Like it was really bad. I kind of really felt for Bev here when she was screaming like that, but he has over the shuttle there and kind of doesn't know where he's going, closes his eyes and gets these coordinates and off he goes to the Zaberg. And that, this scene here, this is the same exact scene where the shuttle was leaving the Titan going over to the USS Intrepid. So they just reuse this scene. I think this I know that there's some reused scenes there from the Titan, of course, especially her and Warp, but I thought this was kind of a noteworthy scene. Like, they, I'm like, did they change it to take out the USS Intrepid? And as soon as the Intrepid is about to, to show, that's when they cut it off. So I thought that was kind of funny. But then we have this, of course, with Picard and Bev, them just lo looking, looking at Jack Warp away there. And again, you look at, Beverly and the look on her face again the level of emotion that she was putting out there she even talked about Wesley which was you know she lost Wesley to the stars she tried to watch Jack a lot closer but then ended up losing him so it kind of hurts as a mother you know as a parent you kind of feel that so and this was an awesome moment too as Beverly leaves you know Picard sits down and, and Data comes in is like is there anything I can say Picard's like, no, there's nothing you can say. And he, he knows that, but he does this moment where he actually just puts his hand on Picard and Picard just kind of holds his. I, I thought this moment was really good. It made me smile. You know, you see, you see them just sort of having this moment and we know that a lot of Star Trek, The Next Generation, was also based on this sort of friendship between Picard and Data. So I'm, I'm glad, you know, that we got this moment, but again, the feels were really, was, it was already starting to hit here, Caps. It was really starting to hit here. But then we're back to Jack here. He actually reaches the destination. It was like super quick. <laughs> it was super quick. But this is where I didn't know what had happened, whether 
where he had ended up is where the Borg was because when he was talking, not talking, but stating there's a warning from the computer, like, is this a wormhole or thing? And the computer says like a trans warp conduit. The next thing we know, he looks up, it's the Borg. So I'm not sure if he went there and the Borg was there or he went there, then he was he went through the trans world quantum to the Borg. I, I'm not quite sure, but the journey there wasn't that long because there's not that much time left to Frontier Day and we get to Frontier Day in this episode. So I just found that kind of way too quick. And again, but it is what it is, but we see the Borg cube there and this is the one that is in his mind, you know, and, it's, and it actually has the same kind of effects of the storm that we see there in the clouds when there's flashbacks in Jack's mind. So... But before that, LaForge did ask Picard to come down because they're going over what they found in Over the Files. So they were mentioning that they stole Picard's body because what they had done to him as Lacutus is like they kind of implanted him and changed his DNA to have some Borg sort of dna changing effects which they couldn't detect all those years ago but now they can and they're saying it's it's modified dna and it was from the borg and this is what vatic the changing was after and that's why hence they cut off or cut out of picard's body the actual infected parts of what they're saying is aromatic syndrome but actually it wasn't Iramonic syndrome data even mentioned that that's why Sung was working on his body because it wasn't that. It was actually this. And of course, that is now passed on to Jack because of what the Borg did. So I thought that was kind of a, uh, I guess, eye opening where, wow, all this time Jack is sort of dormant with all this. And then now it sort of just spawns. So it is what it is kind of that plot of the story with Jack again kind of lost me but I think they were doing it okay in a sense that it was still being carried forward not to be so much in your face not trying to drag it but it was like such a stretch in my mind and so but again we had all this moment here and they still don't know 100% what they were going to sort of do with it but they do mention that what Jack can do is actually transmit hence why he can sort of control people that's his sort of quote unquote ability that he's gained from picard and what he has been passed down to him with the dna so apparently john lukes is a receiver right because he's always getting or he's, he's getting orders from the queen but jack can transmit so that's pretty cool in a in a, in a, in a sense when i say cool a sense where it's like a father-son thing, right? This, the, the father, Picard, is receiving, and then the son's sort of genetic sort of hand-me-down as well, I can transmit. So that, that, I thought that was pretty cool. And the way that the visual here was was done well. But they're saying, well, here, here it is. Frontier is upon us, and this is where they're saying that they have to actually get to Seoul. So Picard actually... You know, says to Liam, we got to get to Seoul. <laughs> He's like, why? <laughs> I, I love this moment with Liam, and but we'll get back to to more moments here with Liam. But, you know, they have they have to. They, there's just no doubt about it that they have to get to Seoul. And that's that's it. And that's what they have to do. So but then then we get this. We get radio sort of chatter of the Enterprise F coming out and it's being commanded by admiral shelby i thought that was quite interesting and we do get some moments of that but finally and i'm gonna say yes yes captains if you're new here the content that we do here on youtube is mostly from star trek online and the enterprise f this ship the odyssey class is the flagship of the federation in game and we've done videos of us covering this and to see her finally, at least second last episode, but to see her finally there in moving, it just made me, oof, almost like I was proud, definitely was proud seeing the ship come out. And I do have the ship in game. So seeing it actually come out and, and doing this sort of flyby, that that that, that scene there is, it, it was just magical. I, there's just no two ways about it. And that's a national new skin that one of the developers, Thomas, shout out to you, sir did for Picard. So 
Hopefully, as soon as the Picard season is over, we're going to get this skin in-game. So that means, Captains, if you're wanting to fly the Odyssey here, give her a shot. You can actually own this ship in-game and with a chance to get the skin from Star Trek Picard. So I take this opportunity to invite you to try Star Trek Online if this is one of your things where you love to fly ships. And of course, Star Trek ships at that. So... But then here again, we get Shelby and wow, she has, whew, she has aged. And, but this is apparently is the bridge of the Odyssey, which I think is just redressed, obviously, because you can see the doors behind her, which the doors, the same type of doors that the Titan has there. So, but it was quite interesting. And again, another shot of the Enterprise F. I was, again, this moment was a very huge nerdgasm for me and as a Star Trek Online player, it's like a proud pop moment, I'll, I'll, I can say that. But Jack does decide to head over to the board cube and the queen is talking to him now. And if you can hear, it's the queen from First Contact. So it's now you know, no one else's voice but her. So they're having a chat back and forth here about you're my son, all that blah, 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 blah. And Again, I kind of got this moment I could not connect with because of what Jack is doing. Though it's a noble attempt, I, I still thought, but again, this is revealing, of course, the Borg plot, right? So now we get the, back to the Titan into Shelby's sort of frontier day speech. And, you know, she's just giving this whole thing of what they're doing with the fleet there and their maneuvers is a whole new special type of maneuver that the fleet's doing. It's a kind of a defense slash offense type formation. And again, we see the Enterprise F there. Now, the one thing I will say, top left corner there, Captains, there's another ship from Star Trek Online. They're right beside the Echelon class. To its left, it is the Alita class. So shout out to my Caps who saw that there. But this... I took a bunch of screenshots of, of course, the whole fleet here as best as we could, as best as I can. And of course, look at that ship. But we see finally we get some inquiries here, but we also get some Luna classes, get some Sovereigns, Alitas, and a bunch of, of course, I think we saw Defiant there as well. But look how many Federation ships are here of Sagan classes. That is the probably the biggest fleet I've ever seen in Star Trek. Their sacrifice of angels, I know, I, but this just seems so much bigger. And their formation that they took was kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. I didn't get the formation why that was. We might get an explanation. I'm not sure. But again, Shelby does give her speech and she says, Happy Frontier Day. And Riker, <laughs> you can tell Riker still had some animosity towards her. And again, he did it very well. It's like they were back in those days when Shelby and Riker were on the bridge there. And there it is, Admiral Shelby, like so just condescending. Just did you can tell he does not like her. But look at and then there's a screenshot there of on screen there of all the ships there in formation there around ESD. So and then Jack does reach the Queen Chamber. We don't see the Queen. We just see the back of the Queen. Now I'm not sure why they chose to do this. I would think that in the next, in the last episode, God, that hurts to say, we're going to get to see her face, but here they decided not to show it. But Jack did try to pull the trigger on her, but it didn't work. It just didn't work. And this is why I, I couldn't connect to this moment, to this sort of story plot, because like, meh, like why? You know, and then he just actually allows himself to get assimilated. So... So now we have a Jack there that's assimilated. Now, my sort of thoughts on this is Jack is probably going to pull a Janeway. And if Captains, if you remember what Janeway did was the future Janeway went back in time to Voyager, let herself get captured by the Borg Queen, and then sort of infect her. I, I feel like that's what's going to happen. Or Jack can do something miraculously where he just does something else. I don't know what that is. And of course, this begs the question to say, okay, well, so what about Gerardi? I know that their captains have told me there's no connection from that to what's going on now, but do we at least 
get them in the last episode. I would like to see. I, I hope so. I'm almost really hoping so because now the Borg had been introduced for formally. They're here. We left the Borg hanging at the gates there <laughs> guarding what? A whole transwarp conduit. Sorry, I should say a transwarp conduit. Is that going to play a part here? I I'm not sure. So, But then now we're back with Bev and Data and Jordy. And they're still kind of going over the sequence. And what they find is that Picard's sort of DNA was sort of put into the transporter. And from my understanding is what it's doing with the changes coming on board, taking over and we're infiltrating the Starfleet is by the transporters, they're actually quote unquote assimilating them through the transporter system. And they're also, it doesn't matter what species or anything. It, it, Picard becomes like the, kind of the basis DNA and it's his DNA that infects everyone. So imagine being told that too. And, Picard never got that news just as yet, but you know. But now the Titan does reach Earth, and again, there's that formation. I don't get why that formation is there, or why it is, I should say. But once they get there, they now are sucked into automatically in what they call the fleet formation mode, which is the mode that I can't get over there. But Admiral Picard does try to interrupt Shelby, and this is where it starts to go downhill because as he's trying to tell her what's trying to go on, change is taken over, connection is lost, of course, right? That was going to happen. And then there was, a, a Mira had a report saying something about a massive spike. Then we get this scene. I don't know where this is. I don't know where it is. It just showed it. It could be where, of course, Jack and the Queen is, but it, this thing just started up. And then everything started going haywire with the screens and then Seven even felt it. And she said, it's a Borg signal that's happening. And with that, though, we go back to the conversation here. This, they're trying to say that it's going to only affect kind of younger crew from my understanding. Because as they get older, something about the cortex or whatever, but that is why or that's what they came up with i should say now liam does try to say you know go to religion mira and well this is where they're getting taken over so i thought this was kind of this was a cool scene where all the sort of younger starfleet officers got taken over and even sit sitting yourself too and she said we are the borg and that was great that was that was great it was kind of eerie but it was also done really cool and then we get this shot because now there's like all comes like what's happening here. And actually, Shelby, she's gone. <laughs> she's gone. They actually show her getting shot here. So she's dead. So the Admiral Shelby made her first and last appearance in this episode. But they're showing the severity of the situation. And all of a sudden, all the crew there that is infected stand up. And of course, they are... There was it was mentioned that all the unassimilated need to be eliminated so they start coming in there now this is where i got a little fearful for liam's life because he kept firing and looking away and while the security team kept trying to or at least the starfleet officers that were infected that were borgified came in so i was like good dude look where you're shooting please or look at people are shooting at you but they they did go to the turbo lift there now jordy did try to get to his daughters because of course it's affected the young ones all of them and data said like look for what this moment was very cool like you can tell it was data but there was a more human type response from data and I, and I absolutely loved it and they just said well we need to come up with a plan and now they're showing again all the younger sort of starfleet officers going after them and this lieutenant here is the one who sort of takes over the red you can see the laforge sisters there at the back there and she does say collective we are we have the titan that was that was that was kind of creepy I, I would i would have thought that it would have been sydney i would have been probably my opinion but better if it was sydney but then we when they're in the turbo lift here though they do get a message from the captain of the excelsior saying they were able to retake the bridge now unfortunately as they retook the bridge they were also taken over 
and their signal is shown here that they're put in front of the fleet. And we got some really good Easter eggs here. You got the USS Hakaru Sulu, the Cochrane, the Luna, of course the Intrepid there, the USS Clark, that Fire's Word, Magellan, the Venture, Galgamesh, the Mandel, we're seeing a thumbnail, and there was just so many cool little Easter eggs there, but there the helm got taken over there, and next thing you know, they actually did fire, and then the captain's like, tell my family, and then boom, they're just they're just gone. So that that was quite a sort of moment of you know, this is real. You know, not to say that it wasn't real before, but Liam does mention the comms though. It was like an old maintenance channel or something like an engineer maintenance channel. So what their next plan is to head down to the maintenance sort of area of the ship and try to escape the ship via one of the sort of maintenance shuttles. So that's Picard actually orders everyone to to meet down there. And of course, here we get the shot of the fleet. In the middle of all the little smaller formations was an Odyssey class. So I thought that was really cool seeing that. And you can see all the ships here because the Titan did actually join the formation now because it got taken over. But you can see there the Odyssey classes. There was like five, a bunch of Sovereign, Echelon classes, of course, Sagan classes, the Alitas there, that, which is just a, an Akira, a, a modernized Akira. And you get again, this formation is just weird. It's like a almost like a rainbow. Whether that's just straight and they're kind of just following the curvature of the earth, I, I don't know. But their target though was Earth's defenses, and of course, their first being Soul, the ESD there, which kind of sucks because I like that ESD. It looks really cool. Star Trek Online's ESD is the same, but without those little pods sticking out. So I'm not sure what we're going to see in the next episode there. But again, the formation here was just kind of odd. In my opinion but they reached the maintenance hatch and i thought this was cool they come out and of course they have guns also drawn onto them and raffi now is here with them and deanna makes a line i've never been so glad to see so many wrinkles i thought it was really cool beverly took took center stage here i love i love that i love how she took center stage here and this moment here when they got my daughters and like we'll get them back this, this was good but their plan is again to get that shuttle to get out of there but unfortunately and this moment was awesome because Data said, yeah, those shuttles are autonomous or they're, they're not connected to the fleet. Seven says the robot's right. And <laughs> the look on Data's face, I thought this was pretty cool. You got a kind of an eyebrow moment raised there from Jordy. I thought that was an awesome moment between there. But now, unfortunately, though, it was only a matter of time until the, the Borg found them where they were. Of course, there was a shootout here. And this was an awesome moment. They're, they got into the shuttle there, and George was like, can you be more optimistic? Like, I hope we die quickly. <laughs> just another dataism, just another sort of sprinkle of humor in this sort of perilous moment for them, and I just enjoyed it. I really did. Now, this sucks, Caps. This absolutely blows so hard. As Liam was protecting everyone and making sure that they got to Chettle, he, he gets shot. And I'm not going to lie, I was really looking forward for a spinoff series. And he, yeah, this, 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 this moment hurt. This moment hurt. I'm not going to lie. Third time I watched it, I still teared up even more than I did the first time. I think... And I've always mentioned from the reviews, I've always had this relationship with him in terms of, I don't like him. I don't die. Okay, you're right. Why you gotta be a prick? And now please don't die. And unfortunately, this is where it, Liam's character ends. But having said that, huge props to the actor Todd there for adding to the Star Trek universe. And he made a lot of us want a show with him. And he felt that too. But this was a great moment between Liam and and seven because he actually says no no this is no longer my ship you take the con commander seven of nine you know and i seven urges picard to leave and just get us out of there raffi does decide to stay too along with seven but when he says that there's this look between the two 
and it was it was just a great moment between the two. I think it was like the first moment they really had chemistry on screen, in my opinion. And you can tell even Seven was kind of devastated. But yeah, we we lost Liam. That unfortunately this was the end. And I again I thought it was gonna happen there at the bridge, but it happened here and it had to happen. But he did say the Titan's yours now. So Seven could still get a spin-off show, I hope. And hope she does actually keep the Titan and it's her ship, but the, the, mm, mm -mm. I, <laughs> Woo! man, Caps, I did not want to lose Liam. I really didn't. And all I can say is it was a great character to be added to the Star Trek universe. And he did a great job. I think he really did a bang up job from beginning to end. And it really showed because of the support he got from the fandom, in my opinion. So unfortunately, that was the end of Captain Liam. But then we get them actually just leaving. Now, finally, the Titan and warping out because Jordy has a place to go. And here is the final word that they are going to go after Earth's defenses. And you see, again, the fleet there. You see the Gagarin there. Again, a bunch of Odyssey classes. Like, look how tight they are in terms of formation. I did see a Pathfinder there, which is the Voyager B, I believe. And again, just this sort of weird looking formation. There's also the Ross class, which is the Galaxy class, sort of revamped there. But so, in I think two, three episodes when we were introduced to LaForge, Alondra said something about Bay 12. Well, this is where the feels really hit Caps and Jordy's plan. Well, it was just, whew. once I saw this, I lost my ever loving mind. I lost it. I changed my uniform. I don't know how many times I was, by the end of this, I was in a towel that I just could not keep up with how much feels was. And I didn't expect it, but everyone's reaction to it and then actually seeing the enterprise d oh my god captain the galaxy class the enterprise d was my first ship that i saw in star trek and she's my first love and to see her i did not know it was that of an emotional connection i had with it but it is tied to my childhood and this is why i love star trek this is why i love doing what i do because of essentially this beginning this she's my first love and to see her there and Jordy said thank god for the prime directive because they could not leave it on the planet there because it would interfere with the planet's sort of growth so they took it and over the years Jordy was restoring it piece by piece using pieces from other ships too as well and it's supposed to be a surprise but man seeing her and everyone's reaction to picard's Everyone's just, she, wow, oh man, mm. it, it was a great moment, I really think, and everyone's reaction to this was just awesome. Even Data was saying, I don't know what I'm feeling or whatever, and, and, yeah, yeah, same here, and I loved how they reacted to it, and I think they reacted for us, but we were reacting in our own way. And there was a mention there, Jordy said, well, we can't use the E, and now I don't know this reference, so forgive me, Captain. If you know what they're talking about with the Enterprise the end this warp, because he said it wasn't me, let me know in the comments below. I'd really like to know. Someone said something about Prodigy, but again, I didn't watch Prodigy. So let me know, Captains. But again, them hitting over to just just the reactions. It was just so pure and it was awesome. And even Picard's and when they get onto the bridge, my God, the music, I will say the music, when the lights were turning on, the music, not only in this scene, but in all the whole scenes and up to this point, I think the music was really on point. And it, I just could not feel, oh, mm -mm, mm -mm, not right now. Mm -mm. I could not help but feel sort of just uh, taken back to my childhood and seeing them all together there on the bridge was just whoo that was so good it felt good and the way they were talking about the ship and there were some jokes there here and there and Riker saying that I just the, the bridge gets smaller I just get big and everyone's 
facial reaction, the music, and, and, and them just kind of, them being in awe with me. I'm being in awe with them. That, that, and how they restored it just, it just looked so beautiful there. And it, I just couldn't help but, that, and then we get everyone, again, personal reaction there. It, it was just, oh, I may see that, I misclicked. <laughs> That's just, I can barely contain myself. It, I, it, it, it was so good. It, it was really just such a moment for, for myself and I'm sure for a lot of people and with the music and, and Picard walks over. Now this was hilarious because, because Worf talks about he loves the Enterprise E's systems are more advanced and Dan's like Worf is like but she's perfect Jordy or whatever. It was it was awesome. Yeah, just Worf being doing his Worfisms and I'm all for it. When Picard goes over to the plaque the US and USS Enterprise is just memories. I I was taken by nostalgia. What can I say? What can I say? And even Picard's joke was you know, being here with Data's like, oh, hello, chair. <laughs> but Jordy says that this is the last ship that's not tied to the grid, not tied to the system. That totally reminded me of a Matrix thing, but reference. But Jordy made sure that, yeah, this is the ship that's going to be the last sort of hope for them to, to get to the bottom of this. And even Picard has a moment here is what he realized being here all with you is he missed the carpet. I thought that was a great joke. As much as this was such a nostalgic feel, feeling moments, they also took the time to just make it light, but you just can't help. Now Picard actually t asked the computer to, the computer to kind of activate everything and it's Major Barrett's voice it again they did this so right and it felt so good I could not help but just tear up every time I got to this and just get this sort of speech from Picard the the you know I can't sort of help but ask you guys again to come with me to ride danger and then Riker's just where's your family we're here with you and we're gonna do this it just mm, just so good the moments on everyone's face it was just great it was such a great moment and then we get that look at her captains oh my god i just feel like it's the first time i saw her such a beautiful looking ship again out of all the ships in star trek this is my first love and they did her so right by giving her this moment in this last season of picard but then here we go this is this is their giddy up moment they're they're heading out there picard orders data to head to the solar system and then we see just the enterprise leaving dock like just look at her she just looks so good and then we get a, a picard tuck shirt moment yes 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 we get all the feels all the nostalgia everything and we also get the iconic engage ah, that was just so good and and the last kind of shot here is of the enterprise warping out and oh my god this this episode had so much feels that i could not help myself but again just appreciate me being a star trek fan i, I just have no words as much as i had problems with the storyline especially with Jax, this moment was what i was waiting for and a huge, huge thank you to the Star Trek producers, Terry Metalis, all of them who gave us this moment. And it's forever immortalized in the season. And this is a season, and this is a scene that I will forever just replay over and over again. And again, accompanied by the music, how they revamped the music. It's, same, it's the same familiar music, but man, did it ever... I wish I could play it, but I know I'm going to get copyrighted if I do, but... Oh, it, it was so good. I cannot help but just smile whenever I think of this scene. And like I said, it was great. Now, the last couple of things here, I get, I just wanted to point out before we give our conclusions and score this again, great episode, but love here. Enterprise computer, Major Barrett. That's awesome. And I was actually right when I heard the Queen's voice. It was actually there, a special guest star Alice Creek who again was the board queen from first contact so there it is captains there is our review for the latest episode Vox again I'm in disbelief that there's only one more episode left and 
this episode, though, I don't know how they can top it. I don't think they should because, of course, everything has to now be resolved. So, like I said, my theory is Jack is going to pull a Janeway. And or we're going to probably see Tuvok again. Hopefully you see Janeway, actually. That'd be great. So he either has something up his sleeve where he's going to medically, he medically induced himself with something to infect the queen. Because, you know, all those years with Beverly, well, he does, he did pick up some stuff like that. So, and plus they were trying to cure planets there in the beginning of the season. So that is kind of my thoughts there when it comes to the crew there. I, again, I don't know how they're going to top the feels of them, but I want to see the Enterprise E now in action. Against the fleet, though, what can it do? I, I don't know. I, I do hope we get some space pew pews, but I mean, all those ships again, Enterprise D, it's not going to help. No, that's why I'm hoping my other sort of theory is Gerardi is going to come and help because she's still in command of that huge starfish Borg ship. So who knows? We'll have to see. But Captain's not in disbelief that this is we're, we're going to be going into our last episode, but it has been such a great season up to this point. So even though I had my problems with the Jack storyline and that whole thing there i cannot not give this a 10 out of 10 just because of how i was taken for an emotional ride the whole time i was shaking while i was watching this i was crying i was laughing everything i felt everything in this episode but i felt that throughout the whole season up to this point so i'm looking forward to the last season and also i'm uh, last season the last episode but i'm also not but captains know that we will also do that cover that as well give our thoughts on that but this episode definitely has a 10 out of 10 for me. And I'm glad they brought back the Enterprise D. I'm glad they gave the moment back to them. But I'm so sad that we lost Captain Liam. So, but thankful that we got him in the Star Trek universe. So, Captain, there it is. Like the video. Comment below. Let us know what you gave this episode in terms of score. And, of course, we're going to have to wait until next week's episode of Star Trek Picard Season 3, the final episode and we get to finally see how this ends we finally get to see the tng send off and hopefully it does live up to the hype that they brought us up to this point so captains with that said we will leave it on this note live long and prosper